What is up guys, Nick here, and today we're once again going to be working on 3D printed arc reactors, but with a twist. What if I told you that one of these arc reactors was a resin print and the other was a 3D printed aluminum arc reactor? Would you believe me? Well, it doesn't matter what you believe because I'm telling you right now, this arc reactor right here is fully SLS printed out of aluminum. That's right aluminum. This isn't a 3D print that just so happens to have metal in it. No, this is straight up aluminum. So today I'm going to show you how I built this thing. This would be thanks to this channel sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a company that offers a wide range of services, such as printed circuit boards as the name entails, and they also offer 3D printing services. So not only can you order FDM or SLA prints from them, but you can also order SLS parts. SLS stands for Selective Laser Sintering, and it allows you to make metal 3D printed parts a reality. But before we get any further, I'm going to give the mic to Pass Nick, and he's going to show you the unboxing of these metal parts. Flashback. I got a box. Okay, so this finally came in the mail today. I haven't opened this up yet, and I can't wait to check this out. So without further ado, hip. yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so got a lot of foam. Yeah. We have a bill of materials here. Aluminum, 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 aluminum. It's all aluminum. I like the weight. It's a little hefty. I'm into it. I think I know what this is. Hold on. Let's unwrap this. Oh my. <laughs> this is so cool. This isn't a part we're going to be using today, but this is for an arc reactor. So this is part of the Unibeam files by Neon Robotnik. This is the outer casing. So these are magnetic pogo connectors and they work really, really well. They're super strong magnets and it's a two pin connector. They have tiny circuit boards on the back of them so you can wire them up easily. So if my measurements are correct, it worked, it worked, it worked. Look, the pogo pin is in the hole. It's a perfect fit. Wow. So that just goes to show PCB weight and tolerances, they're pretty on the money. But yeah, you get, you get the idea, you get what I'm doing here. This is going to be in a future video and this is going to be the, I don't know if I should spoil it just yet. Just know that this is going to be a very cool gimmick in a bigger project I'm doing. So that's all I'll say. So let's put this right here and let's open up another one. Number two, let's see what we, oh yes, dude. Check that out. So basically this is the frame of this here. If you can, there we go. This is insane. This is so cool. Oh, did you hear that sound? Did you hear the clunk it made? Oh my, I am just having a ball right now. Okay, next up. I think, yeah, this must be the outer casing. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I just love the sound it makes. Can you, can you hear that? Is the mic picking it up? I can't wait to start this. This is going to be amazing. This is going to be so cool. Just, oh, and this is the last metal component we're going to be using on this arc reactor. That is disgustingly good. Wow. Just look at it. It's so freaking cool. Basically it is, oh yeah, no, the tolerances are basically perfect. It just fits together perfectly. This is going to be absolutely bananas. Oh, it's so heavy. Like it's not absurdly heavy, but there's, it feels like metal in the hand because it is. <laughs> this has better tolerances than my own resin printed parts. I'm kind of annoyed. <laughs> so big thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this channel and this video in particular. So what we're gonna do now is print out the remaining resin printed parts that we need for this thing. Then we're gonna go sand and buff out these metal parts so we can get them perfectly smooth, perfectly polished. So let's go do that right now. On Neon Robotnik's design, there are quite a few components that are clear. So the very first layer of the clear parts is this diffuser piece. And then on top of that, we have this detailed core holder piece. So this is what's going to be holding the element. It's just a piece of clear resin, but for the sake of this video, let's pretend that this is some sort of new element that Tony Stark made in his garage in an afternoon. And lastly, we also have this glass piece. And this piece is going to enclose the arc reactor behind this metal detail. And since this part is so foggy, it means we're going to have to spend a lot of time sanding this down until it's perfectly smooth 
and then adding a clear coat over that so that we can basically give it an illusion of glass like I did on this version of the arc reactor. And right under this glass piece, we have this teeny tiny little detail piece right here. So I'm not a big fan of the way this turned out on the resin printer, so I'm going to be reprinting this in clear PET G. And right under this diffuser, we have these two resin printed parts. And these two pieces are just like nondescript detail bits. And that's why I decided to have these printed in resin instead of metal, because we're not gonna be seeing them too much. And these are also going to protect our electronics from the metal, so. In hindsight, it was actually really smart, but I didn't think about it at the time. But let's just say for sake of argument, this was totally, totally intentional. <laughs> Anywho, let's get to sanding these metal parts. I'm not sure how I'm gonna go about it, so we're gonna go into shop and we're going to test some stuff out. All right, so I think the very first thing we're gonna try is an electric sander. I have no idea how much this is actually gonna have an impact on the sanding quality. I'm kind of hesitating to use the grinder over there. I don't know if you can see it, there's a grinder right there. I'm gonna start with this, see how it works. If I like it, I'll keep going. And if I don't like it, I'll probably switch over to the grinder, but we'll see. So just to test out how this is actually gonna work, I'm going to sand the bottom half of the um, outer ring here. That way we're not impacting something that we're going to visibly see on the reactor. So if it goes completely wrong, we're good. <laughs> wrong way. <laughs> Nope, still didn't work. Hey, there we go. Ooh, that's dusty. Oh, wow. This, this works great. This is insane, check this out. But yeah, I like barely sanded it for like more than a few seconds and it already looks pretty good. I don't know if it's catching up on camera, but it's shiny now. So I'm gonna keep doing that and hopefully this works. Yeah, I like this. This is a good start. It's pretty scratched up, but I think we can get rid of this with some buffing and polishing. So I'm gonna go sand the rest of these parts and we're gonna start buffing and polishing them. A few moments later. So that was a lie. <laughs> So instead of going right to buffing the part, I decided to mess around with wet sanding and I gotta tell you, the results are absolutely incredible. Check this out. So I wet sanded this with 400 and 800 grit sandpaper and it's already super, super shiny. The only thing that's left with this part is polishing it. So I'm gonna take you through the process of wet sanding the other parts and then we're going to polish these. All right, so I'm at the workshop sink now. I just got done sanding the outer ring and the casing of the arc reactor. And now we're gonna take our time, sand this with 400 grit, then 800 grit, and then 2000 grit. This is gonna take a while. This is not gonna be fun, but as you already saw, the results are 100% worth it. So let me just start running the water and we'll begin. Eh, I'll start with this. This is gonna be easier. So I have my trusty 400 grit here. Get it nice and wet. Let's start with this flat section here. Yeah, this is gonna, this is gonna look good. Slowly but surely, we're gonna sand some of these scratches away until it's perfectly smooth, and then we're just gonna bump it up a notch with the next step of sandpaper grit. All right, so I finally got done sanding all the metal parts. They're looking pretty dang spiffy, not gonna lie. Honestly, I like the look of these parts as they are, but I got myself some Mother's Mag and aluminum polish. We're going to put this on the buffing wheel. You can see it's already darkened because I did test it out and it looks pretty sick, but let's just pretend I haven't done anything yet and put some of this on a little bit more. I don't know if this is the proper way of doing things, but I don't care. I don't care about doing things proper. What am I, a professional? Nope. Is that doing anything? Can't tell. Oops. This is insane, look at this. What? This is bananas. This should be illegal. I shouldn't be allowed to get this finish. See that? That is like a chrome finish. Just from a little bit of sanding and then polishing. That is wicked. That is worth the price of admission for 3D printed metal parts. Wow. Whoa, geez Louise. Okay, so we're finally back inside. We have all of our parts 
they've all been sanded, polished. I even clear coated it so that the polish wouldn't tarnish over time. Wow, that was a tongue twister. So the polish wouldn't tarnish over time. Say that three times fast. So the polish wouldn't tarnish over time. <laughs> what am I even doing? What is this? What is this video? And just like your typical Minecraft YouTuber, I did do a lot of work off camera. So first things first is this glass piece, which is actually just transparent resin. I spent a bunch of time sanding this down until it was perfectly smooth. And then I hit it with the clear coat. That way it would be transparent. And next up we have these inner detail bits. I went ahead and sanded these and I painted these a flat primer black. And one last thing I also went ahead and did is I added a magnet on the inside of this and I added a magnet on the inside of the diffuser. That way when I'm assembling it, these two pieces just line up and fit together like that. So that will allow me to take off the entire front of the arc reactor to change out the battery. I am also going to be using NeoPixels for this project. Um, I went ahead and already soldered these together. And the other slight difference between this arc reactor and the one we're building right now is the microcontroller that is controlling the NeoPixels. In this one, I used an Arduino Nano. It barely fits in the casing. I wouldn't recommend it, but it still does. So if you want to use that, you absolutely can. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to be using an ATtiny85 board. This is a total pain to actually program because it's not necessarily meant to run on Arduino IDE, but you can install drivers and install a bunch of other stuff to get it to work right. But I did manage, and if you guys would like to see a video on that, please let me know in the comments below because these boards are pretty small and pretty effective. So we won't be doing the coding for this thing today, so let's get to the actual wiring. All right, so I think, I wanna look at you, I wanna look into your eyes. So I think the very first thing we're gonna do is solder the switch, and then we're gonna solder, solder? Solder the lead that goes to the battery, because I don't wanna cut up the battery to add a switch. I just wanna be able to turn it on and off. And then we're gonna, solder that lead to the board and then we're going to solder this connector to the board because it's going to go to the neopixels so yeah let's go do that right now let's put some solder on this bad boy i'm like so the brain fog right now is incredible it might be because of the solder okay so what we're going to do is um since the lead for the battery the plug that goes to the battery isn't doing anything we're just gonna combine the two. I'm, I'm gonna combine the uh, ground of the uh, lights with this. Just gonna save some time, save some soldering a little bit. I'm like feral right now. Will feral. Oh, God, my puns are atrocious. Are you too good for your home? There we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, let's do the lead that goes to the digital two because why not, we're already here. Come on, there you go, oh yeah. That's a sexy solder connection. Okay, that should be good. Uh, okay, this is the point I've been dreading. I really don't wanna do the connection for the switch. I don't wanna do it. I don't wanna do it, man. I'm gonna do it anyways, and I'm gonna repurpose some of this wire, cause I can't be bothered to go get more. Uh, which side had solder? I'm getting confused. I'm getting turned around right now, possibly bamboozled. I am losing my patience for my own bullshit. Just gonna use my finger to guide the wire along as the solder melts. Yeah, see, there you go. Well done, sir. I'm not talking to myself, I'm, like I'm not congratulating myself, I'm congratulating the solder. I don't know if, which one is more insane, I don't know. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, so in theory, I'm gonna go grab the battery. Oh God! I'm good. That's plugged in. That's plugged in. Nothing's happening. Turn on the switch. And nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? Oh yeah, it's catching the light. Look at that. Okay. Oh God, that is bright. I need to get the diffuser on that ASAP. There we go. Okay. So let's turn that off, move this aside. So basically everything is ready to go in terms of electronics. Just gotta put it in now. Which means I need super glue, an accelerator, and we're gonna start gluing stuff down. First order of operations, I think is going to be gluing these two parts together. So let me just grab a little bit of this sticky stuff, this edge, because it's never gonna come apart. It doesn't have to come apart ever. So we can just glue these two pieces together in the casing, and then it's just gonna smush it together. Uh-oh. 
Why won't it fit in? Why won't it fit in? Oh, something just made a sound that I didn't like. Well, we're good now. It's all glued together now. I don't think we're gonna have to use glue for this. I think we can just smush this in like that. There we go, yeah. This baby's got our glass in now, look at that. Um, we're also gonna have to glue this piece in. We're gonna do the exact same thing on this side. Just add a giant dollop of glue, let it sink in, and then wipe away what's left. Look at that, very cool. So we should be aligning everything with this corner. There's no real right or wrong way to go about doing this. We're just gonna have to add glue and hope for the best, I guess. And we're just gonna have to let this cure because I'm not putting accelerator on this again. <laughs> this works great, actually. So yeah, I think we're ready to put glue on this and then we'll put the electronics in and it should work just fine. Okay, let's start stuffing the electronics in here, I guess. Okay. Let's close this back up, like so. I'm so proud of this magnet, it worked so well. It should turn on any second now. Way, let's go. <laughs> All right, and here is the finished product. I knew the finish on this was going to look good, but I didn't know it was gonna look this good. It's insane, especially when you compare it to the original arc reactor that I made, which is a resin print, which I painted with Duralumin Tough. Yeah, no, these things are incredible. They are practically identical in terms of the metallic shine you see on them. And that just goes to show how good Duralumin Tough is because it is as shiny as a polished aluminum part. Plus with all the resin printed parts inside the actual arc reactor now, it takes on a whole different heft. Like earlier, it was pretty hefty. It was a little heavier than your average print, but now that it's fully assembled and like, you can really feel the chunk of this. It literally feels and looks like a hero prop. I'm, <laughs> I'm in love with it is what I'm trying to say. Now the only downside to this is getting SLS printed parts is fairly pricey, especially in metal. It was around $150 including shipping or plus shipping, I don't really remember, but honestly, especially for this particular design, the uh, Mark 4.2 by Neon Robotnik. If you were to build one like this, I would absolutely recommend investing the extra money and getting those SLS printed parts in aluminum because the results speak for themselves. They are absolutely phenomenal. This thing, ow. <laughs> that actually kind of hurt, oops. But with that said, I think that's gonna be it for today's video. Once again, a big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and for sponsoring this channel. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bam!